LLMs are always behind. They do not contain up-to-date information and examples for programming languages, libraries, tools, or whatever else we software engineers are using. Depending on the date an LLM was created, it might be days, weeks, or months, or even more behind. As such, examples will be using older libraries, outdated APIs, and deprecated versions of the tools. Moreover, since LLMs are in a way databases of the whole internet, they might give us code examples taken from places other than, for example, official documentation. They might give us generic answers that do not match versions we are working with. We are going to fix that today in a very simple yet effective way. We are going to teach our agents how to get up-to-date information they might need to come to the right conclusion and perform correct actions. We'll take a quick break for me to introduce you to Corbit, the sponsor of this video. Corbit is an AI-powered code review agent that transforms your SDLC by delivering immediate context-aware feedback on every single pull request. It performs like a senior engineer, but it is faster, like way faster. For engineers, it integrates with GitHub, Bitbucket, and GitLab. It detects bugs, security issues, and code quality concerns while educating developers with clear, actionable explanations. For managers, on the other hand, it generates release notes, sprint reviews, and performance insights automatically. Corbit supercharges developers, liberates reviewers, and gives engineering leaders the visibility they need to ship better code faster. More importantly, Corbit does not replace engineers. It upskills them. It makes them more productive. Big thanks to Corbit AI for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to the main subject. By the end of this video, the likelihood of your AI agent doing the right thing will increase exponentially. I'm using Cloud Code today for a simple reason. It is, in my opinion, the best AI agent out there right now. Still, that does not matter since you should be able to accomplish the same outcome with almost any other agent you might be using. Now, let's say that I'm interested in knowing what are the most important new features and changes in Crossplane V2. After a few unsuccessful attempts, Cloud Code realized that it could not find the correct information. That was to be expected since Crossplane V2 did not exist at the time the model I'm using was created and it failed to find what it's looking for online. The good news is that the agent responded saying that it does not currently have direct access to Crossplane V2 documentation. At least we know that it cannot help us with that query, or at least not yet. It would be much worse if it simply hallucinated, which is what happens most of the time, just not in this example. Now, Crossplane V2 is, at the time of this recording, still in the preview phase. Nevertheless, I want to use it because it's awesome. So let's write a prompt that instructs it to create a new Crossplane composition and composite resource definition that represent an application. And that, and this is important, it should compose resources directly using Crossplane V2. The outcome is, this time, even worse. I like the response of the first prompt that admitted that it cannot find the information. This time it confidently, uh, confidently created a composite resource definition based on V1 API. If I would not already know that it's wrong and that whatever follows next would not work, I would probably spend quite some time trying to figure out why the code it generated with absolute confidence is ultimately failing. Now, let's get out of cloud code and fix that. We'll fix the problem we're facing by enabling the AI agent to use context 7, which will provide it with up-to-date documentation for any, and I repeat, any public project. We'll do that by adding an MCP server. Now, I will not go into details about MCP servers since I'm already working on a post that will talk about them in more detail. So stay tuned. For now, what matters is that we instructed Claude to spin up a server that will give it the information it needs when it needs it. That server contains up-to-date information about thousands of projects and the agent will use it in tandem with whichever LLM it is set to use. Now. Let's get back to Claude. Next, 
we'll ask the same question about crossplane v2 features again, but this time we'll instruct it to use context 7 server we just added. We can see that this time it asked us, me actually, a couple of times whether I want to use context 7. First time it asked for the permission to resolve library ID, which allows it to find the specific documentation it is looking for, and the second time to get library docs, which will give it the information from the official crossplane documentation. The important note here is that by doing so, it is fetching the latest crossplane docs, or at least the version that might be only a few days old. We'll see later how we can change that so that the documentation is literally the latest one. After a bit more thinking, it spit out the answer that is indeed the correct one. It figured out that v2 got namespaced resources, that it can create compositions of any Kubernetes resources, and that there is new composite resource definition API version. Now, before we started using Context7, the agent created for us an XRD based on v1. And this time, it found out that there is v2 alpha 1 API. That's absolutely awesome, since all that means that the agent now works with up-to-date data, and we can ask it again to create a new crossplane composition and composite resource definition based on crossplane v2 spec. And then it goes, after a bit of thinking, just as before, it created the first file for us. This time, however, it did the right thing by using v2 alpha 1 API. We let it create the rest, and you need to trust me when I say that this time everything it did is correct, or mostly correct, because it used not only the information it contains in the LLM it is using, but also up-to-date documentation accessible through Context7. Now, let's take a closer look at Context7 itself. So, what is Context7? It is an MCP server that pulls up-to-date version-specific documentation and code examples directly from the source. Right now, it includes only 5,000 projects, and that number is growing rapidly. So, let's say that we are interested in Crossplane. We can check whether it is already included by searching for it. And right now, there are four, at least at the time of this recording, four repositories that match that keyword. That was not the case a few days ago when I realized there is the Crossplane project itself, but that the repo with the docs is not included. So, I edit it, and we'll see in a moment how to do that. We can also see the update field that tells us when was each of those repos pulled into Context7. Crossplane docs is, right now, five days old, while I said earlier that we always get up-to-date information with Context7. That was not fully true, wasn't it? More precise wording would be that we might get outdated information, but that we can update it ourselves. If you go to, for example, Crossplane Docs, we can click the Refresh button, and a few moments later, the data related to that project will be fully, fully up to date. Now, even though there are thousands of repos in there, we might still be working with something currently not available in Context7. I, for example, tend to use Crossplane KCL function a lot, and it is currently not available in Context7. We can fix that as well by simply typing the repo and pressing the Add Docs button. A few minutes later, all the docs in that repo will be included for anyone, not only me, for anyone using Context7. That's about it. Context7 is simple, yet very, very effective NCP server that makes a huge difference when using AI agents for software development or operations. Try it, use it, it's a must. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one, cheers.